Hi folks, welcome back. Uh, Navid here from Edinburgh Endodontist. Today we are covering the often misunderstood root fractures and I will um, tell you why uh, in this lecture. Please uh, check the previous clips to familiarize yourselves with the format of these short clips on dental trauma. This week we are covering fracture injuries and next week luxations. The aims, learning outcomes, etiology, and risk factors uh, have been already discussed in previous clips. Please watch the clips as well. Today, we are going to talk about root fractures. As the name suggests, these fractures are located in the roots. Uh, they may be horizontal, oblique, or from the long axis of the tooth. Uh, we classify them into apical third, fractures, middle third fractures, and cervical third fractures. This classification facilitates and in a way dictates the management of these injuries. Clinically, depending on the location of the fractures, um, for the coronal fragment, you may see that it is mobile with displacement, which is obvious to the eye. Uh, present an occlusal interference suggesting displacement injury. They may show gingival bleeding suggesting periodontal ligament and socket uh, trauma and show transient discoloration from the crown which could be either red or gray due to capillary rupturing within the coronal pulp as a result of, as a result of the impact. Radiographic findings are also dependent on the level and position of the fracture. A type of fracture, for example, horizontal or oblique, because if you've got a horizontal, um, it may be easier to see uh, on the periapical than the oblique fractures. The separation of the fragments as well, because if the two pieces are apart and separated, they'll be easier to see um, than the root fractures with absolutely no separation. The direction of the beam helps a lot. So if your beam is in line with the fracture, uh, you will see it better. That is why occlusal uh, radiographs are very useful. And some are even trying to move to a small field of view CBCTs to be able to have a full three-dimensional assessment and view of the region. We don't advise a CBCT, routine CBCT in general practice, unless you've undergone appropriate training as a referrer and interpreter of CBCT. If you look at the periapical here, uh, you can see that it's impossible to see any issues really uh, on this periapical. Uh, but if we change the angulation, the beam, take a upper occlusal, you can see a cervical, a cervical third fracture here. So occlusal uh, radiography helps a lot in um, the assessment of the root fractures and it should be routine uh, for traumatic dental injuries so it should be part of your clinical examination uh, and radiographic examination so you take different angulation periapicals and an occlusal just to make sure that you're not missing anything the fracture can usually be seen as a radiolucent line if there is no clinical occlusal interference and the line is extremely thin on the radiograph, it means that there is no, uh, the, the, there is no displacement. However, if you have clinical occlusal interference and why the radiolucent line, it reveals coronal fragment displacement. If you can't see any root fracture on the periapical and you suspect that from your history and clinical presentation uh, that there may be uh, a root fracture, take an occlusal radiograph as explained uh, before, uh, and it may reveal the fracture. But just, you know, have it within your routine examination of trauma cases anyway, 
So take different angulation periapicals and an occlusal. The management in primary teeth depends on uh, the stability and displacement severity of the, of the tooth. If the tooth uh, in question is firm and not displaced, just monitor and reassure. If the coronal fragment, however, is displaced or mobile, extract the coronal fragment only. The apical bed should be left alone and it will just resolve away. In permanent teeth, if you have displacement, you should digitally reposition using watch winding motion as if you're using a K file. Uh, you need some apical pressure and this needs to be done under local anesthetic. So apical pressure and watch winding motion to reposition the coronal fragment. You can then splint the fragment temporarily uh, using either a roll of composite uh, on the incisal edges only, a triad, which is flowable sort of uh, resin, um, or I just use green stick. But whatever you use, you just need to make sure that it is uh, rigid to hold uh, the fragment in place, but also can be removed easily after you've done your definitive splinting. And it is just there to stabilize the fragment so that you can do your uh, definitive splinting. Take a radiograph to ensure that you've repositioned the fragment correctly. If happy with an accurate repositioning, splint the fragment to the adjacent teeth and when finished with splinting, remove the temporary splint. If you are using composite as your temporary splint, make sure that you only put it on the incisal edges and make sure you don't bond the temporary to the definitive splint. To watch a video, because uh, I actually want you to go and watch the video because it will make a lot more sense. Uh, to watch the video of splinting, go to the members area of Dental Trauma UK website and watch the clinical video clip of the splinting, please. Splinting is needed for all types of adult root fractures. Anything that really has got uh, suspicion of periodontal damage, really, and movement. Uh, but the duration and type depends on the location of the fracture. So you remember the classification we talked about of coronal, mid, and apical uh, fractures? They come handy here. Now, this is the misunderstood bit of root fractures. Root fracture injuries do not need immediate root canal treatment. They may need it in the future, and that is why you will do your uh, review, but immediate management does not include root fracture. This is a clean crack within the socket. There is no um, contamination of the root. If you've got avulsion of the coronal fragment, that's a completely different story. However, within the socket, a fracture is a clean break and impact. So you should not need any uh, root canal treatment. However, if the coronal fragment becomes non-vital in the future, and that is why you're gonna be doing your review, then that particular coronal fragment will require root canal treatment only. For apical and middle third root fractures, you just use a flexible, a flexible splint for four weeks. For cervical third, uh, use a rigid splint for four months. And the prognosis of this uh, cervical third fracture is not as good as the other two. In fact, they've actually got poor prognosis. You need a rectangular stainless steel wire as opposed to a round wire to act as a rigid splint. And some also uh, splint two teeth on either side instead of one to increase the rigidity of the splint. Uh, and I've seen some people using just composite across to make sure that it is you know, as rigid as it can be. Uh, but the rectangular wire works the best. Um, for flexible, use um, one tooth on either side uh, and use a round stainless steel wire. Monitor for four weeks in apical and mid-third root fractures to remove the splint. 
and then three, six, and 12 months and annually for five years, your clinical, standard clinical and radiographic assessment and sensibility. For cervical fractures, however, uh, you need to do your three months, then a month after that, uh, get the patient in to remove the rigid splint, which makes it four months from impact, uh, and then six and 12 months and yearly for five years. So uh, to recap, four weeks for of flexible splinting in apical and mid-third fractures and four months of rigid splinting in cervical fractures. And remember, you need to reposition and splint and monitor for four weeks to remove the splint, three, six, and 12 months annually for five years uh, in the ap apical and mid-root fractures and you know, to remove the splint four months after the impact, after you've placed the splint, you need to get the patient in to uh, remove the, the splint. On review, oops, sorry. On review, um, you want a physiologic mobility of the fragment, um, no pain, no swelling, no increased in periodontal pocket depth, no discharge, no sinus, and uh, the tooth needs to be responsive to sensibility testing. Uh, and radiographically, you don't want to see any evidence of increased periradicular radiolucency. You may see some resorption of the fracture uh, sort of line that is fine, uh, but you, know, you don't want to see uh, frank periradicular radiolucency um, and severe resorption. But if the tooth is stable, and you think that the coronal aspect is has become a necrotic or you know lost vitality, just do the root canal treatment on the uh, on the coronal aspect. And uh, to establish that, you really need two signs confirming of uh, you know this loss of vitality. Okay, that's the end uh, for our short clip on root fractures. Please visit Dental Trauma UK uh, website for the splinting video in the members uh, area and come back tomorrow for uh, crown root and pulp uh, fractures. Uh, stay safe and take care. Goodbye.